Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Barbinus World. In the last episode, I placed down a bunch of blackstone as I'm um, landscaping around my base, and I wanted to design a wall that fit with the theme pretty well. And I came up with this um, massive block of concrete powder. I really don't want to spend a few days more manually placing down blocks. So I was trying to come up with a way to semi-automatically place it down, and I came up with this little machine right here. And it's not very reliable. So when I started looking for better ways to do it, I came up with this design. And this is actually a design by Omango that's really cool because not only is it 100% reliable, but you also don't need to move the player around, which means once you've built everything up, uh, you can do an entire wall, even around corners, without um, moving. We have a redstone clock here that makes it so that the um, blocks are pushed at the exact same time every time you place one. We have these little booster station things so that it can go farther than the push limit and basically Every time it's about to reach the push limit, there's a piston here that can push it further. And this also works around corners with these. Here's what it's going to look like, um, very sped up. As you can see, once it starts getting to that first station, it gets pushed along by the device. It's going to start happening now. It leaves little gaps, but those all get fixed at the end. Okay, it's about to get to the corner now, and there we go. I am really impressed with this design overall, so definitely do check out Il Mango's video. I guess it's time just to start building off this in survival. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is just tower up to the place that we want the start of the wall to be. As for height, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it a about um, 60 to 70 blocks tall, depending on how high the ground is and that means we're going to stop at 128 on the y coordinate no all right now i think it would be convenient to have a big outline around the um place where i want to put the walls so i'm building this out of dirt and soul soil just because it'll break quickly with the shovel when i have to get rid of it later so i've got to mark one spot every 10 blocks with soul soil to mark where we want to have those stations Okay, the entire ring around the top of the wall is done. I've actually got to turn up my render distance to see all of it, and I guess I will also have to when I run the machine. But yeah, it's all there, and I really hope I spaced out all of these correctly, otherwise we're going to have some issues. Alright, now moving on to redstone, I'm going to need to start collecting a bunch of resources for the wall builder especially observers, but luckily I've got farms for everything, so it should be fine. Alright, I'm really hoping that what I've got here should be enough. The first thing I've got to do is build the first redstone clock circuit facing in this direction, and then we can just stand here or something, place all of the blocks in one place, and they'll get pushed. Okay, I put in the clock, and here's how it works, you just turn on the lever, and it pulses this piston every 10 ticks, or twice a second. This piece is going to push the concrete powder out for the first 12 blocks, and then once it reaches the push limit, I need to build one of the booster stations. It's a sticky piston like this, with um, observers looking at this block, and then more observers taking the output of that block. We also need to put a slime block right here, and that's actually what's going to grab onto the blocks. Anyways, that's the entirety of one of the stations, and we just need to build one of these every few blocks at um, these points. I've finished this row of um, stations and it goes all the way out to this corner. And at the corners we need a slightly different machine. All we've got is an observer looking at this block an observer looking into this observer, and a normal piston, not a sticky piston, pushing everything over that way. Alright, now I've just got to continue building these all the way around the entire place. Shouldn't take me too long, because I'm getting pretty fast at it. 
Welcome back guys, I'm finally done with all of the pusher things and that means I'm almost ready to run the machine. Before I do, I want to go around and check to make sure I didn't botch anything up and I also need to remove all of this dirt. Alright guys, I'm all done checking over, I actually found one mistake but everything should be fine now. I've removed all of the dirt because that's not necessary and I just want to give it a quick test before I run it for the final time. Alright, this is the first test, here goes. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. I did some calculations and I'm pretty sure it's gonna take about five hours to do the entire thing. Alright, we're on to the second row now and it's pushing over fine. Now I just want to get over to the first little station. Alright, it's about to start pushing over. There we go. I have actually upgraded this place quite a bit, and this system should be good for AFKing for a long time. I've filled up all of these chests with all of the concrete powder I've crafted, and it's also connected to this dropper, which is automatically activated in time with the clock. If you're standing here placing down the concrete, it'll get refilled as this goes. I'm almost ready to start it up. My mob switch is on, my inventory is set up and I guess I'm just gonna turn it on and build for a while and hopefully this all will work fine. Welcome back guys, uh, it's time for a quick progress check-in because my game crashed and therefore the time lapse ended. Hopefully you did enjoy that time lapse because you're not getting another one because it was a really big pain to make. Anyways, at this point I would say we are almost halfway done with the walls. We've got uh, no issues so far really, um, everything is absolutely fine. These gaps uh, between them are normal and they'll all get filled up at the end. As for supplies, I think we are running a little bit low. We're at under half of our supplies left and we're at under half of the way done. So I'm definitely going to need to get more. I'm stocking up the machine with eight more shulker boxes of concrete powder. And I really hope that this doesn't run out because I used up my very last supplies of gravel. No time lapse this time. I'll just check back with you guys when either this entire thing is done or something goes disastrously wrong. Alright, wish me luck. This time I've set my render distance to only 16 chunks. Hopefully that helps with the game performance a little bit, but I'm already noticing quite a lot of lag. So, I'm really just hoping it doesn't crash again. Welcome back everybody. After leaving the wall builder machine running overnight, I have a bit of good news and some bad news to share with you. The bad news is, unfortunately, that we're completely out of concrete. Every single one of these chests is empty. But, for the good news, we are almost entirely done the wall. Everything is looking super great. I really didn't expect this wall builder to work so flawlessly. The only things that aren't done yet are one little patch where I forgot to remove a leaf block and a few of these things over here where there's some small gaps. But with just a little bit more concrete powder, we should be able to fill this up super fast. Alright, I'm done collecting resources, and now I should have enough to craft up just a little bit more concrete powder uh, to finish the walls. Alright, 
This ought to be enough, and I think I'm just going to finish the rest of it by hand rather than using the machine because I don't want to risk having any problems, and it shouldn't take me too long just to fill up a few extra cracks. Welcome back guys, the entire wall is completely done now. And when I was fixing up the spots that I missed, I also got rid of the wall builder at the top. As you can see, it's just a straight edge at the top there, and that looks much better actually. Not only does this wall look monstrous from the inside, if you come from above, it actually looks crazy. It's not really meant to be looked at from the outside, but... If you do, if you're looking at it from the castle, it actually like is massive compared to the size of the castle, which I thought was a pretty large build. I thought I was done with the wall now, but actually I just came up with an idea that I never really thought about before somehow. If I just pour water on the sides of this wall, I could solidify the entire thing and turn it into actual black concrete. And, uh... Yeah, when I was building this, I, I just thought, oh yeah, black concrete powder is a gravity block, but I never considered that we could turn this into a wall of black concrete by just pouring water on it. And I think that'll look much nicer, because even though the um, concrete powder does have a kind of nice texture, when it's on such a large scale, um, and there's so much concrete powder everywhere, you sort of start seeing a grid-like pattern. As you can see behind me, it's just like repeating, and it gets a bit boring. So, basically, I'm thinking that if we turn all of this concrete powder into um, solid concrete, it's just going to totally get rid of that grid-like pattern, just like this. As you can see, it just looks totally blank, and if, if you're like walking around here, you'll think that you're just staring into oblivion. Alright guys, this definitely looks so much better. I guess now we're completely done with the walls, so all that we've got to do now is um, add some details to the area. And I've got a few plans for this, like um, decorations and paths and trees, but if you've got any more ideas for how I could detail this, maybe leave them in the comments. As I said, I do want to start off with some paths, and that means I need to make an entrance. And yeah, the entrance is going to be right here, it's not going to be anything big, I just want to cut out a hole in the wall right here where I've got the path to my castle. For this doorway, I want to try to build a piston door, and I've decided to use the um, sand door design by DocM77. I think it's pretty cool, and hopefully I'll be successful in building it. Alright, the piston door is done. It took me a while, but it turned out to be really cool. Here's how it works, you just press the button, and it opens up, and on the other side, you can close it. Jolly good. Coming in the door like this, uh, you can see I started to build up the path already. I showed you this path design a couple episodes ago, and I want to use it. But uh, it does take quite a while to build this, so before I start, I want to actually plan out where it's going to go. G 
good stuff. I've laid out a large outline for the path out of slime blocks, and here it is. It's basically just one main path with um, little uh, secondary paths that split off to each of the buildings. So the main path just goes around here, loops around across the river, and uh, into this main area here, splits off to that building, this building, and another path goes all the way over to my starter house. Let's not waste time, I do need to get this path built, so I need to dig down two blocks in all of the areas that I want it, and then put in the glowstone and the glass. I'm entirely done with the path, and I think it looks really good. I don't know if it was really worth it to put so much effort into this path, seeing as it was kind of a pain to build, but I think it looks great, and uh, even though I'll never use it, it'll be nice to look at. Okay guys, we've done a lot of stuff this episode, and now I think it's finally time for us to end it off. As I mentioned, in the next episode, we're going to be building a lot of a lot more decorations in the empty spaces around here like this. So feel free to comment your ideas for decorations in the comments. Anyways, I guess that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.